This short video is showing how to insert a table inside a data module and also some manipulation associated with that. What we're going to do now is to insert a table inside this data module. And we're going to move down to a point where we can do it fairly straightforward. So I'm going to put it between those two paragraphs there. We need to go to the elements uh, window and select table. And inserting table then gives us uh, uh, an area which we can say, OK, we're going to put a title in here. So um, you don't have to have a title with a table, but uh, we'll call it that. And then what we have to do now is we have to choose between graphic and T group. Graphic is a historical thing. It's based on the Cal's table model. So what we're going to do is to put in a T group and insert that. At this point, we have a um, window come up which is says insert table. So we're going to have a choice here. We, we can change things later on, but uh, we're, what we're going to have is uh, four columns uh, and three body rows is fine, and a heading row. And the table format is is the um, is the Cal's format. So what we're going to do is to insert that now, and you can see that immediately we've got here um, in the left hand window in the structure window, we've got the uh, is uh, three entries, four entries, sorry. Uh, now, one of the features about um, uh, S1000D is that uh, originally uh, you could put text straight into a cell. You can't do that now. You have to put in, if you want ordinary text in there, you have to put a paragraph in there. So what I'm going to do is to slightly cheat. Uh, I've come down to para here and uh, insert para. And uh, what I'm going to do then is to copy that and paste that in there, uh, there, and there. And what that means now is that we actually do have a paragraph in each of the cells there. So I'm going to put in that this is a table head one. Have to be careful when you put in table head two. 23, 2, table, head, 3, table, head, 4. So what we've done now is we've actually entered into the um, text of the header um, that simple text. Now we're going to do a similar sort of thing um, for the uh, table body. So uh, we're going to put that in, OK. So we're going to put in a paragraph there. Uh, and I'll now populate the rest of the table this way. You can see now that I've populated the rest of the rows and cells with the information which helps uh, tell you what things are. One of the first things I want to do is to actually um, switch off the borders. Uh, and now you can see on the screen how the S1000D table is normally ruled up. The header has a line above and a line below, uh, and the actual table body itself has a line underneath. But for the purposes of this, so that you can see what's going on, I'm going to switch the borders back on. I'm also going to, one of the things that you can do with S1000D is actually using FrameMaker. You can actually do things with the tables to actually um, format them. So what I'm going to do is to go to custom, come on, custom ruling and shading. And that brings up a new part underneath here. So what I'm going to do is to actually um, dot it. I'm not going to have it double. I'm going to have a, uh, a medium line on all of these items here um, and just apply these. What that's going to do is it shows you actually where all the cells are. And why I want to do that is I want to show you just how easy it is to manipulate the table. If I now... Uh, Click on that bit there, you can see that what we've got is we've got uh, the rows 
um, well and truly highlighted. Uh, and if you don't believe me, um, I'm going to switch off the borders. There we go. Put them back on again. Right. Now, it's very easy to change the size of the table cells. You can now see, I've highlighted that row, that column rather, and you can see the little uh, pips just, just to the right of the table cell. If I now move that across, you can see the whole thing has been moved, and I can actually do the same thing again there. Now, the thing about this particular function is that if your table goes over several pages, just doing, uh, just actually putting, doing that, it will highlight the whole of the table, uh, and you can work on it like that. So what I'm going to do is to uh, start show you just how easy it is to merge cells in rows and columns. So to start with, I shall highlight those two there and right click and you'll see the word straddle. When I do that, it puts those two table cells together now. Uh, and you can see, I'm going to switch on the formatting, uh, the text symbols, and you can see that actually there's a text symbol at the end of those two there. Now, if I put a space in there and press delete, then it it won't bring the two together because there are two separate paragraphs. Okay. They're in there as separate paragraphs, but they're now in the same cell. Now, if I needed to move the text, I would have to do uh, have to do that by hand. But you can see that what we've got now is we have those two um, table cells connected together. So what I'm going to do now is to actually do a similar exercise, but using connect, connecting two rows together. So in fact, it straddles exactly the same exercise. Click on that and click on straddle. And those two cells there come together. If I now switch off the text symbols and switch off you can see what it is we've done. Clearly, that is still part of those. Uh, if I, you can see, you can all, you can see that I've changed it, and I can actually once again change the things uh, very simply by making those modifications. So that is, in essence, how one inserts a table. You can increase, you can increase the uh, rows. Go to table. Add rows or columns. What do you want to do? Add one row below the selection. Add. And you can see it's added a row below the selection. Uh, but you'd have to start again by putting paragraphs in there. It hasn't detected that they have paragraphs in there. Mainly because, of course, if we, if we now go to elements, you can see all the elements that you can have actually in, in that cell. A considerable number. Now one of the things that you have to watch out for is of course where a specification has business rules which say that you can't do certain things in there. Certainly one or two of the business rules that we've seen um, have said that you can't have um, random lists in there or even numbered lists. You can't have uh, lists inside cells. That's the specification that they have decided to do uh, and clearly you have to follow those.